And there we go. Mr. Sev, congratulations on your Game 2 victory. So how the hell are you feeling? Uh, feeling good. Feeling happy that we were able to draw the series. I think we were a bit, uh, a bit sad after Game 1, but, uh, you know, we bounced back, so happy. Uh, Seb, do you mind if I ask, what went wrong in Game 1? Yeah, we're not actually sure ourselves, to be honest. As in, um, it felt uh, the, the game felt harder to play than usual for us. So I think we have some replay analysis to do. Uh, I was trying to figure out if uh, players didn't play aggressive enough on the map, because it does feel like... Um, it felt like there was a lot of pressure on the map, more than it should be. Uh, and sometimes, yeah, I think this is one of the few times where I'm actually not sure uh, whether it was misplay or miss theory. So we have some work to do tonight. Hey, you talk about the aggression uh, from game one. Like game two, you guys were unbelievably aggressive. Did you kind of just tell the team, like, listen, guys, we can't let them do that to us again. We're going to be the, the guys that run over them first? Yeah, something like that. I mean, I think game one, we had the tools to do the same, but for some reason, it didn't come to that point. Um, honestly, they, they're a very strong team. I think um, they they fought back pretty well, even in game two. I don't know how it felt watching it, but at some moments were pretty tense and it could have went both ways. Uh, but I mean, we're comfortable with aggression. We're comfortable with our potential as soon as the game starts and we're also comfortable scaling. So, but that game, we had enough openings to just keep snowballing, I guess. Huh? Go on, Joe. All right, Seb, I want to ask, you know, coming in, you guys didn't have to play planes. Um, do you feel like you guys had very different ideas to what we saw from the planes? Because it does feel like there's a little bit of newer ideas coming in from, from the teams that are coming in straight to groups here. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think the teams that came to the group, this group stage compared to the playing teams have completely different views on the meta. Um, you know, we were playing scrims against each other's uh, back in Europe or w w wherever. And they were playing planes here at the same time. The, uh, yeah, hundred percent. The meta is quite, quite different. Right, and I'm curious. Going forward, is there any team you really want to dig into to face off against in this group stage? Any sort of uh, friendly rivalries, I suppose, on hand for you here? <laughs> friendly rivalry. I had an answer until you said that. Uh, no, I'm kidding. I mean, uh... <laughs> unfriendly. <laughs> unfriendly. All of them. No, no, I'm, I'm just kidding. Um, no, I think all the teams here, especially in Group A. Uh, I think Group A is like very stacked from from what I've seen in scrims and in and, and general from the team. So every team is like capable of topping the group, which is quite scary to think about. So it kind of depends, you know, like the shape of everyone and, and who adapts in what direction. Some teams are going to break and some teams are going to improve. Uh, we're in very good shape ourselves. We're feeling very confident. So we're just eager to play everybody and, and see if they can take us. Oh, well, said before. I, before I do, I have to let you go. So, how's the uh, how's the dad life? Congrats on the uh, on the child. So, how's that going for you? I mean, it's amazing. It's it's a baby that doesn't bother me about runes and and last hits and, and denies. <laughs> you know, it's a uh, it's the best baby I've had so far. So, <laughs> I mean, I like that baby more than the others. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you for that, Seb. We uh, we can't wait to speak to you again. And uh, congratulations on your game two victory. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, Seb. Thank you. The, uh, bye bye. The, the lovely, it was a lovely step, of course. A uh, fantastic interview, as always, with uh, with the, with the man himself. I'm joined right now with Seb from OG here at Riyadh Masters. We're going to have a bit of a conversation about your uh, very long and decorated career within Dota. But before we even start talking about that, I want to know how your day is and how you've been going. My day has been great so far. Yeah. Uh, super happy to be here. Uh, happy to. Yeah, be with the boys, you know, getting ready for a big tournament. So these are this is definitely what I like doing. So much better than the online sequences. So I'm 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 great. I'm thrilled. Perfect. That's what I love to hear. The the mood is uh high, it's ecstatic. Uh let's start with your origin story in Dota. Where exactly did you start playing and who kind of helped you make that transition into into Dota? Not even professionally, just in general. Yeah, I mean I started playing in um I, I don't even know exactly when, but maybe two thousand and six, two thousand and seven around these years uh, obviously at the beginning I was just a casual player a big noob uh, and the competitive when I started playing like seriously was more around 2011 maybe 2012 and who really helped me break into the scene was uh, Titwan Sokchka he's here with us as a manager like he's filling in um, for this event so he's gonna be here uh, he was the he was really the one that believed in me uh, and that actually convince other people to try me out and give me give me time give me confidence so yeah i owe i owe, I owe him a lot 
Oh, that's very sweet to hear. Um, when did you want to uh, go pro? Like, what sequence of events made you think that there was a career in Dota for you? I never really thought of going pro. I was just playing the game because I really liked it. And I'm a very competitive person, so I just wanted to improve and play with better players. So I was seeking for just more competition, like better players. And uh, I never really enjoyed being like the best in the lobby. Like I always wanted to be the worst and, and try to challenge players that were, yeah, supposedly better than me. Uh, and I think I was convinced by by some people that I met that I should maybe consider playing tournaments and that there was, back then there was no such thing as being pro. Uh, there was no such things as, as getting salary or anything like that. But they, they were like the beginnings of it. And some people had to convince me that, you know, such path is starting to exist and maybe you should pursue it. And look, now my final question is, you, you've built this legacy through all those journeys, through those heartbreaks, through those highs, but is there anything that you would change looking back in hindsight? Mm. The only thing that I would maybe change is I wouldn't get mad or angry or really upset at the at my you know my loved ones like family parents that actually were doubting what i was going for uh, i'm a dad myself now i'm an early dad but I, I i already start getting the feeling of like um your role is to protect and sometimes you're gonna be wrong in trying to do so so i would kind of i would be more indulgent towards them in a way uh, even though i i think they were wrong and they had the wrong approach but it came from a place of love. Of you know? course. And I failed. I sometimes failed to see that in the moment, at least for sure. I was blinded by, yeah, I just needed support because it was so rough. Uh, so I wished for support instead of defiance. But, um, but definitely I would maybe change the feelings I had and probably some of the reactions I had. Uh, they were immature and they were, they were short-sighted. But I only realized that later. Uh, so I have to make up for it today. Oh, I yeah. love that. That's, yeah. that's awesome. And obviously you can then pass that on to uh, your new child as well. Yeah. I love it. Well, Seb, thank you so much for taking the time, talking to me. And uh, I loved going down memory lane with you, but good luck in the tournament. Thank you so much. Flaps still being chased, but Flaps has gone a boot. And GG is called Team Spirit. They've seen enough. OG, they will successfully force a draw against Team Spirit as Tomato. Oh. A rampage to finish it off. Oh my goodness. OG. What a game two we saw from these boys, Jonathan. What a readjustment after that game one. And it is. They play it to their strengths. We saw them again run this in their first match up against Blacklist, this Marcy SF combination.